DNA is the genetic information storage molecule of life, but proteins are the actual machinery of life. They're the molecules that do all the work in our cells. They perform really critical functions like transporting oxygen throughout our body. They make up the structure of our muscles and our skin. And they make up the antibodies in our immune system that protect us against disease. Proteins are amazingly intricate in their structures. They're beautifully folded into very intricate three-dimensional architectures made up of peptide chains. And it's this three-dimensional structure that's responsible for their functions. So scientists have been studying the relationship of structure to function for years. We often use computer graphics to represent a three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional screen. But it lacks some critical dynamics. We can't really feel how flexible these chains are. So we created these physical models of peptides that we call peptides, And they are accurate representations of not only the shape of a peptide chain, but actually the dynamics, the way that they move and fold. Peptides are made of three different parts. Uh, we drew the parts using a computer drawing software, CAD tool, and then uh, had them 3D printed. A 3D printer prints 3D objects uh, layer by layer using plastics. One of our design goals was to have uh, uh, the parts readily available, cheap and easy instructions for assembly so uh, anyone can make them. Uh, we have the 3D printing files in the website and uh, also the assembly instructions. So anyone would be able to go through these instructions and make one of their own peptides. Peptides are really a fantastic new innovation in the ability to teach and illustrate how peptides really look and really feel. And I think that when you put this in the hands of anybody, who's unfamiliar with molecules or molecular structure, it instantly becomes apparent that this is actually really complex. The potential of peptides is really quite limitless. One can imagine building an entire subunit of protein, essentially building one of nature's own structures from scratch in totally realistic ways. This really brings a new dimension to what we can do in the classroom. We're excited about the potential of peptides to really help people design new protein-based structures on their own. So for example, in my research, we're very interested in how we can adapt the blueprints we've learned from protein structure and protein architecture into non-natural materials so that we can control their function. For example, we're learning how to make sensing devices out of these materials that are much more rugged than a protein would be to sense toxins or threat agents. We're also working on drug delivery to be able to deliver drugs throughout our body in a safe way. Uh, and we're working on new therapeutic materials that could uh, neutralize bacteria or other infections. One of the missions of Berkeley Lab is education, outreach, and to reach out to the community. And this project is a perfect example with which you can reach out to the community and have educational tools that people can use and have new insights into the understanding of proteins. I think in the classroom, having a model that you can actually manipulate is highly favorable, especially because I think that the way that our brain works, we can then problem solve with something in our hands and be able to then reproduce what that is in a way that will allow us to then go out and think about those things in a realistic manner. It's more engaging, you know, you're connecting with the subject, you're, you're able to visualize it and play with it physically. So I think any time where you have that, it's, it's definitely going to improve learning engagement, learning possibilities. I would see them as being really a wonderful learning aid. It's very important to understand the structural aspects and the dynamics of how proteins come together. Uh, this is critical for understanding the next generation of therapeutics and new materials and diagnostics. We're really excited to get these tools out there to help people learn about this really fundamental process.